After taking it apart, I kind of figured out what happened. The U-joint for sure was the culprit, but now I'm stuck with the dilemma. The jack I have right now can't get the car high enough in the air to lower the transmission to even swap it out or fix it. Because I was thinking I can just swap out the drive line and then and this thing's too low. Go up inside here, undo the transmission bracket, lower the transmission, and then be able to get up top, undo that, and then replace it. That bolt's completely sheared off. Kind of sucks, but still has somewhat thread, so it might be able to give somewhat of a bite because it still has the other bolt over there, plus the other two on this side. But that whole transmission shifter bracket is shot. You see where the dry shaft hit it. Dry shaft beat up the whole transmission tunnel. But surprisingly, it didn't do as bad as it sounded, it didn't do that much damage. I'm just going to re undercoat this few spots after I clean off all the grease and oil from it, and then the chassis will be good. I got the drive line on the back porch, just waiting for a buddy to show up with the jack so I can get this damn thing up high enough to where I can actually either drop the complete transmission out of it which I kind of don't want to do, I'm hoping it's still good, but either way I have to lower it. I pretty much have to drop the transmission to fix this anyway, so if I can't get that fixed then I have another transmission that's going to go inside of it. But the main reason why I want to keep this one, because with the S5, they kept the same casing, but they swapped up the internals a bit to where you got a fifth gear balancer right here at the back of the transmission. And instead of having one bolt on either side for the transmission bracket, you actually got two bolts for the S4 right here where this open spot is, you'll have the plate that will actually go up inside there and you'll have one bolt on that side and one bolt on this side. I have solid durathane mounts, so there's really not that much flex, so since there's not that much flex, I kind of want the actual more bolts for structural integrity so it doesn't actually shear off. I also have matching engine mounts. Went all the way through, did the rear subframes. That's Durathane. We've got DTS eliminators installed, which are Durathane camber, upper polyurethane bushings that make it to where I have no camber. I'm trying to make it to where I don't have camber because it has too much camber. And then I got Durathane up inside the rear diff bushing, so this whole drive train from front to back is solid. It's either going to blow a drive shaft like it did, blow a, a CV axle, or just burn the tire straight off. Those are the only three options besides frying the clutch. But I got a stage 2 excited clutch with a 6 puck clutch disc inside of it with a stage 2 pressure plate, so it should be able to handle the power. I haven't felt the clutch slip yet. Got a nice pretty oil pan. Surprising for this car being 32 years old. It was in decent condition when I got it, but everything you see here is by me. I got this car for 600 bucks and it was on its way to the scrapyard. Had a blue and red interior. Mitch matched and I done it all black and I re undercoated the whole underside plus the inside of the car, ripped out all the interior, did the same exact undercoating on the whole inside of the car from front to back, roof, the whole nine, and then I got this insulated heat wrap off of eBay and did 25 mils up front, 15 mils in the middle, and then I'm gonna, I have 10 mils in the back, but I'm gonna do another 10 mil on top of it, so it'll be 20 mil in the back to get rid of the drone because it's actually quiet all the way to about the rear diff and then it starts howling. I don't know if it's because of the backlash in the diff. Parky brakes on right now. That's how much backlash this diff has. I don't know if the howling's coming from this or from the fact that I'm running a racing beat exhaust with just dual mufflers at the back. No resonators, no cats. So it could be quiet up here. I'm not really hearing it, but the drone could be coming from the Y pipe section right here or at the mufflers, or it could be the actual rear diff just having all the backlash in it. So that's going to be the next thing that I'm going to take care of after I redo the, get new coilovers, redo the front end because the inner tie rod ends are shot, the outer tie rod ends are shot, the coilover on the passenger side snap, the lower ball joint the passenger side's pretty much shot too, so I'm just rebuilding the whole front end. And then I'm going to redo the rear diff, get new CV axles, get um, super now mini links. If not, I'll go for power by max mini links so I can try to take out all the camber out of it. And I'm going to get power by max coilovers. I'm going to get a 
Cusco six point cage for the inside. I'm gonna get this under chassis brace that pretty much eliminates this tiny little bracket that holds on your subframe and it does a big old solid one that locks in the bolt tighter and then it goes all the way across to these two bolts over here then it goes all the way across right here and then comes all the way up into this section right here so it makes your subframe more part of the chassis and it won't allow it to flex then they got some other bars that will actually go from kind of up inside here to where your bushings are on this section and it'll go all the way to these little points right here so there'll be a rod that'll go from here to over here so it keeps the actual subframe more tighter and it keeps these flanges from actually trying to snap a bow and then it has an x brace which i thought was the coolest thing ever because it goes from that mounting point from that mounting point does an x right here around the transmission and then it ties off somewhere over here and somewhere over here but the only downside is my exhaust system hangs down so fucking low that I don't think that's actually going to happen because I want to do the rear subframe bracing, the X-bar, and then they have a Cusco brace because the X-bar just does literally an X between this whole section from there to there, back to that corner, back to that corner where this section right here is still left open and Cusco sells a bar that will attach from that point to that point to make your subframe instead of a C an actual um, complete circle so it keeps the subframe from trying to flex. And then I'm going to do these bars that you remove your fenders and they lock in your fenders from the inside. Your actual real well area to your actual shock, or your shock tower area to your actual firewall section. They'll actually go up inside here. They attach right up inside down. They go all the way along down the side there and actually attach to your firewall. So it keeps the whole front section of the car from trying to tweak like this when your firewall staying steady your actual two little bars are still trying to tweak like this under load and that will pretty much try to correct that there's some work that still has to be done i can say the only thing that's actually perfect about this car that has an absolutely perfect reliable engine setup and everything when it comes to the engine reliability the interior is perfect ac and heater is perfect Everything on it's almost perfect besides the suspension work that needs to be done, the little goodies that I want to add, and just a basic paint job. And then this car will be done. It'll be a clean enough car you can take to a car show and show off, but at the same time it won't be so clean that you won't really want to drive it. Because that's the downside, when you make a car so clean you don't want to drive it anymore. Then what's the point of putting all that money into it? Just have to wait for my buddy to show up and then we'll get this going. Got some more coming soon.